Hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day and uh, I'm happy to be back here uh, on YouTube. It has been a while, I know. And um, Hello first of all, everyone. I'm really, really happy that I hope you're here. Having a great day. Uh, it would be and, lovely uh, if I'm you would happy to be back here. You can hear and see uh, me on YouTube. And it has uh, been a also while. let me know where I you're know. from and, and where you are. And first of all, I'm everyone. really, really happy that I hope so cool to you're see here. Having a great and, day. Uh, it would be and, lovely uh, if I'm you would happy to be back here. You can hear and see me on YouTube. Thank you. Also let me know where you're from and where you are. First of all, everyone. Really, really happy that I hope so cool to be here. Having a great day. It would be lovely if you been happy to be back here. And see me on YouTube. Thank you. Also let me know where you're from. And where you are, and first of all, everyone is really start. happy that I hope um, to be here. Having a great and, day, it would be and, lovely uh, if I've been happy to be back here for quite a while. And see me, and so many thank you. Uh, also, well. let me know where you're from and where you are. And first of all, everyone is really happy that I hope to be here. Having a great day, it would be lovely if I've been happy to be back here for quite a while. And see me, and so many thank you. Also, let me know where you're from and where you are. And first of all, everyone is really happy that I hope to be here. Having a great day, it would be lovely if I've been happy to listen to audio feedback. I hope. That's better now. Um, if you're interested, you can check those out. I created a few case studies that you can study, that you can see how things are done. And I wanted to uh, point that out on, on my website as well. And um, I've been starting uh, a new podcast in, in English language, uh, which has been on my heart for quite some time. And I uh, just launched it uh, last week's Friday. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, really excited about that. There will be so many new episodes coming. I uh, produced uh, a couple of episodes already that are coming every Friday now. And uh, the first one was with Pratik Naik. Maybe uh, some, of, some of you um, have uh, heard or uh, seen the, the posts. Um, Stephen says better. Is the sound better? Yeah, I... Uh, had one slider up that shouldn't be up so sorry for that uh, I hope that you're hearing me clearly now okay I guess it's better yes um, so yes the podcast is out I'm, I'm really happy uh, about that uh, cheers to Leipzig Stefan and um, it uh there is the next one is coming this Friday. It's going to be with uh, Dennis Dunbar. Some of you guys might know him. He's a fellow retouch artist from uh, from Santa Monica in California. And he's been talking about his passion, creating movie posters for Hollywood uh, movies for, I don't know, forever. And uh, it was really nice to have that conversation with him. There will be so many more episodes coming uh, with all kinds of people from the creative industry. So it's not all retouching and photography, but it uh, started with retouching, it continues with photographers, and there will be some producers, uh, creative directors, um, stylists, um, like uh, so many different models, so many different kind of people uh, that have got their perspective and their view, and I'm really happy for this to um, come alive now. And uh, yes, I'm planning to do much more uh, here again. Uh, I started having a team again. So many things have happened and I'm, I'm really happy that I can continue like going live or at least producing videos. And um, so what I wanted to do now today is to actually show you uh, a couple of, uh, let me just go to capture one and uh, start the sharing the screen. I wanted to work on that image, um, a male beauty image that uh, my friend and photographer Ava Pivot from Berlin uh, has given me. And um, so we have been working lately on a couple of projects together and we formed a really good team. And uh, oh, actually, yes, uh, I wanted to point out that we are working on an educational concept, uh, an event concept that is going to happen um, in June this year. So um, that's about what I can say now, but we are working uh, very closely with uh, a great team on this, uh, making this uh, four day event uh, in June. And uh, it's gonna be um, something that we haven't seen yet. So I'm really happy to be able to share um, news on that soon. And uh, Ava and me, we have the same passion in, in teaching, in uh, 
making people better and my personal mission is to uh, connect to um, to inspire and to empower people to become better in what they love doing and especially for creatives that's one of my deepest passions and I love connecting with people so I decided that's uh, that's what uh, fulfills me that's what I want to share with you guys and uh, that being said um, I uh, want to dive into that image with you and um, just a quick heads up I am not having the, the best day today uh, I, I have quite some some headache and um, I felt a little cold coming so please bear with me if I'm not seeming that concentrated uh, every now and then or my voice starts uh, scratching a bit um, please uh, allow that to happen and uh, I'm giving my best um, until I um, can't go any further but I guess it should be all right today just so that you know uh, if if it gets a little worse that i will let you know but i didn't want to let you down so here we are and uh, as i said we want to work on that image today and as you might have seen in the preview image um, this is um, uh, going to be converted into black and white and i want to make a really nice beauty uh, portrait of the, out of this uh, black and white and uh, with a lot of contrast and showing you how to get there uh, with a couple of techniques in Capture One and also dive into the reaching, retouching process in Photoshop. And that being said, uh, there are many ways to do this. Um, I want to show you my favorite way in um, Capture One that's pretty straightforward. And uh, so, what do we do first? Um, you might know that there is a black and white um, tick box in um, Capture One. And if you enable this, you will turn that image into a black and white version. But you have so many options to actually play with the black and white settings right now. So, but let me tick this off and um, show you what I want to do first. So. Uh, whenever I work with uh, black and white images, I try to, you know, start with getting uh, the base right before I convert it to black and white. So that means that I still want to get the colors right. That has a certain reason. Um, because most of the time, um, when you work on a black and white image, uh, you have two choices. You can either, um, you can convert it in black and white and start working on it black and white or you keep it in the color uh, version and then you convert it later in Photoshop so uh, or the, uh, the image processing software that you prefer. Um, if you are clear about where you want to go um, of course you can take the, the power of Capture One and convert it to black and white here but sometimes clients um, want to have both so the version in color and black and white. Um, so then you would have to do uh, like the retouch in the color version and continue uh, finishing the image first before converting to uh, black and white in the end. But today um, I would love to um, do the conversion in Capture One and but I still want to show you what it benefits it gives you when you um, work on the colors and the contrast first. So looking at this image um, for me personally, I'd like, as I might have said earlier in a couple of my videos, so 4000 in this case is a good way to go. Um, it's a bit dark. Um, I want it to be uh, quite contrasty in the end, so I'd love it to um, be a little brighter. And uh, maybe we can uh, adjust the slider uh, to, what do we have here, 0 0.6. As a base, we could go from there. And um, so what we can do now is increase the contrast, keeping in mind that we are going to black and white. Okay, so for color, that could be, of course, a bit too much. Um, so we can start slow. And uh, I guess I'm going to go with something between three and five, which is possibly, yeah, like something like this. Um, just that, so that the question is coming up, um, as I said, I, I love to do 
as much as I can in Capture One because it gives me the power of the raw file. But um, there are these cases where you do want to do the conversion later to black and white in Photoshop if the client, for example, needs the color and the black and white version. Okay, um, now, that, now that we have set the contrast and the exposure, um, I love working with the high dynamic range sliders. So if you don't know what these do, um, they are quite powerful. So you can work on the highlights. You can dim the highlights on the skin, for example. Uh, you can open the shadows pretty drastically. Um, you can work with the whites, which is in this case um, not as impactful, but you can still take down the lights on the, on the forehead. Or you can work with the blacks and bring a lot of contrast into the darks, or you can open the, the dark parts of the, of the image, uh, which goes, as the name says, into the HD, HDR direction. But in this case, uh, I don't want to work here. I just want to open the shadows ever so slightly, maybe something 15-ish, so, so that we just have a little more uh, detail in the hair. So if you hold um, option and you click that little arrow to the left, you can see what happens. And um, so that would be a starting point for me to go to the black and white conversion because I have uh, a lot of detail. I can see the shadows and uh, the details in the shadows and in the light and in the midtones. And I have a certain amount of contrast that I want to apply. So if you check out the before and after, you see that there is uh, much more detail already visible. And um, now I want to tick the box of the black and white conversion. So what you can see now is uh, that we have a solid uh, contrasty um, look and feel already. Um, I want to show you what it what you can do with the sliders here. Because as you know, skin tones uh, consist from the, uh, red and yellow colors primarily. And when you move the slider, you can see that you can adjust the contrast even more. And with male portraits, um, I think it's, uh, it's a good way to bring in some contrast or um, to, to even out contrast. It depends on where you want to go. Uh, it's a beauty, so um, we we want to keep it like a bit up in the in the uh, red color, and take down the the yellow a bit. So let's see what this does. It evens out the contrast a little bit, so um, that way it's not as harsh. Um, imagine it would be for a beauty commercial. Um, that would be something that. Uh, a little more smooth right so if you want to go here it would be more like a characteristic portrait that uh, you can then enhance the the, um, the contrast with even with these sliders um, maybe not everyone knows that if you once you converted this to black and white you can still work with the for example with the uh, kelvin slider so what it does as you, you can see here it still changes although you just changing the color temperature, you're changing the amount of um, contrast. And uh, same goes uh, for the, the color editor. If you go to the reds, for example, you can, you can change uh, slightly color and contrast. And uh, I want to invite you to play with this because it offers you so much opportunity. Um, what I want to do now is I want to create um, a couple of layers that uh, help me to set the stage for the final uh, conversion and for the work in Photoshop. So um, if you look at that image, um, you possibly want to have the face as the main center of the frame and you want to have the, the eye going here. We have a very bright chest and uh, the, the, uh, the neck. And uh, therefore, I want to introduce um, uh, a layer that darkens the lower half. And therefore, uh, I want to choose the gradient tool. 
and I want to just draw a gradient here. And if you uh, hit the M button, you can see the mask where uh, the change is going to affect. And um, by hitting M, you can uh, deactivate the mask again. But what you can do now is you can use a curve, for example, to just darken uh, the chest a bit um, and adjust it to a setting that goes well with uh, what you want to achieve. In this case, um, I want to go here. and Let's check. Just want to darken it a bit to frame the face a little better. And um, actually, I'm thinking of creating another um, gradient. And in this case, I want to, uh, oops, I want to lighten the face. Actually, I like it with the black. Um, so you can uh, use the this uh, gradient uh, that goes like like this one and then adjust it to a size that you like and hit the M button again. Now you can see um, that everything but the face is uh, masked. So you can hold down the control button and uh, invert the mask. So basically I just want to give a little light to the oval of the inner face. And um, that is, I'm going to do that with a curve as well. And I just want to bring up the midtones a bit and the light quarter tones. So let's see what it does. So it just gives a little more dimension to the, to the face. And um, if we deactivate the layer, I, you can see that now we have a little more, oh, let me switch to the hand tool so we don't have that thing showing up. Um, we can see that we have the attention now in the face and we took it away slightly from the rest of the body. So that was the before and that's the version that I would like to uh, continue working on. All right. Um, so this is the black and white conversion. And um, I believe that this is a good starting base. Um, I want to show you a few details before we move on. Um, I want to show you uh, a grain that I want to bring into the image. And I really like, um, let me check where it is, the film grain, the Silver Ridge one. And I pump it up to uh, the impact of 50. And you can see that it uh, brings in, I hope that you can see that uh, over the, the stream, but uh, it brings in this really nice grain, um, which is quite visible. And I like that in, in characteristic or uh, beauty portraits. And um, so this is one I, what I want to have it look in the end. Uh, usually when I um, convert images, I don't leave the, uh, the grain activated. There are two options. Uh, the first one is that I apply the, the grain later in Photoshop. Um, I prepared some patterns for that that I like to use as adjustment layers. And I will show that to you when uh, we are going to Photoshop. And I also have um, a separate video how to create these patterns um, on my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check that out, please feel free. There's a, there's a video to watch so that you can follow along. And um, the other way would be, and actually my, my buddy Quentin, uh, another Capture One ambassador, a friend of mine, um, he uh, has that technique that he always brings back his uh, files to uh, Capture One and then applies the grain to the TIFFs that he has created from the files in Photoshop. And um, so that's another way to go. But it depends, uh, depends um, absolutely on your uh, preferences and your workflow. Mm. All right, but let's go and switch over um, to Photoshop. And I'm going to convert that in 8-bit and open it in Photoshop.
and um, there it is. So that's uh, what we are looking at right now. Oh no, sorry, I uh, forgot to deactivate the, the grain. So I'm gonna close this one again, go back to capture one, and I'm gonna deactivate the film grain. And I'm gonna export that again. Um, all right, same settings. Just waiting, and here we are. By the way, I just upgraded to macOS Ventura today. I was uh, holding back quite a while, and uh, I checked everything, and it seems to work fine with the latest version of Photoshop and Capture One. So uh, whenever uh, you are like waiting for it to, to upgrade, uh, I think you certainly can. For me, it was safe, uh, it worked pretty well, and just uh, so that you know. And um, so, what are the things that I want to do now? Let's quickly check the image and uh, make a little roadmap of what we are going to do. Um, therefore, uh, I like to create a note uh, layer and I'm going to pick um, a color that is visible with 100% opacity, zero smoothing and just that I can uh, draw in a couple of things that I want to do. So I'm going to take out all those um, crossing hairs that we don't really need. Uh, it's a beauty image so oopsala. Uh, that's something that I definitely want to take care of. You know I'm obsessed with hair. I'm specialized uh, in beauty and hair images and I guess uh, I cannot do, I cannot not see uh, hair that goes into the wrong direction. So I'm, I want to take out all of these um, and give you uh, some, some tools and techniques on how to deal with these things the best. So uh, I'm just going to highlight a few of those that we definitely want to take out. Uh, it's Again, it's a male beauty, so um, it allows us to be a little more um, loose on what we do. Um, so there's a couple of decisions to be taken. Um, sometimes uh, hair can stay. And uh, it definitely depends on the brand or on the brief or on the, um, <laughs> the hair monk, yes, possibly. And um, um, it depends on the, if it's a, for example, if it's a known model, um, you would have to, um, or a celebrity, uh, you would have to check if uh, you, for example, let hair like this stay or if you leave a certain mole or, you know, things that are very special for that person. So I just want to take out a few of these, a few of these here, and I want to even out a bit of the, the dark areas ar around his eye. And um, I don't want to take out all of these hairs uh, of the beard. Um, but I definitely want to take out the white ones and the ones that uh, are a bit distracting. That's the same with the with the color uh, or the the brightness of the the body, right? So you want to take things away that don't really add to the image, but leave the original um, look and feel. So it's just basic little things that we are aiming at. And uh, maybe we are going to clean a few of these bumps here um, because it can be everything. It's out of focus and um, it's things that we don't actually need to leave. It, the image doesn't lose anything if those are gone. Uh, it's this one here, um, you know, uh, it, if it's that close to the edge, I would take it off um, because um, it's not really something that needs to be staying 
And um, yes, that's basically it. And uh, of course, these hairs here. And then we are going to um, enhance the, the contrast even more and the look and feel. And um, we're going to put the, the grain in the end. So let's just get started. And um, please, uh, please feel free if you've got any question, uh, just hit it uh, into the chat, we can uh, discuss everything and um, I'm going to make sure that I try to answer as best as I can. Um, so is there anything, uh, is there a way to bring PSB files back into Capture One? Um, as far as I know, you can open flat files in uh, Capture One and uh, you, you can't bring in layers. Um, so when you have a layered file and you open it, it's going to be flat. Um, and then, you, of course, you can then um, you can then uh, work uh, like with the color grading settings or whatever. But you are limited to the amount of tones that you have in your image, and you don't have the all the colors from the raw. So let's start with uh, cleaning some of the hair. And what I like to... Uh, po oh, wait, uh, there's one other thing that I want to uh, let you know. So I don't know um, if you work with Wacom pens. Um, I get asked a lot uh, what kind of settings I use. So I just wanted to show you guys that I love working... Um, or maybe I should, I should quickly um, go to the this uh, setting here because you do you see is this sharp enough there is a there's this um, felt nib in it so it looks like this and I don't know how to get this sharp but uh, there you go uh, usually it comes with the plastic one but I love working with the soft felt nib it feels like a, a felt nib and uh, like a like a drawing pen, uh, a pencil, more or less. is it a pencil pen? I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, like the colored ones, and it gets you a much more smooth drawing experience on your Wacom board. And I highly recommend you trying that. And uh, let me get back to the to the screen with Photoshop. And yes, Stefan, you can ask in German. I'm gonna try my best in translating. Um, all right, so what I want to do first is I want to go to the uh, heating brush. And there's this, if you hit shift and the button for that, you can switch. Uh, I want to go to the content aware heating brush and activate the pen pressure. What it allows me to do is then if you, if you hold it and you push, you can see that you vary the the size of your brush tip and it is a really precise way in, in retouching uh, texture and it allows you to be very fast and efficient and you can adjust your size of the brush by pushing uh, for the amount of pressure you give to your pen and therefore leaves you with a faster workflow and it's uh, actually if you leave it to content aware and sample uh, all layers, it will sample below and you can work on top of it and you can be moving pretty fast through uh, your image. And that's basically what I want to do. Um, you would have to consider um, the, the amount of zoom that you go in. Uh, if it's for a magazine, you're definitely good with... Uh, just 100% uh, usually doesn't get any bigger than that. If you're working for a billboard or a large print, uh, it would make sense to maybe uh, go in a little uh, and add work on more detail. So what I want to do is just quickly go over it and take out those white hair that are not really adding to the image that or look like uh, little dust spots or something like that. And um, so if I activate or deactivate the layer, you can see the difference it makes. And I want to take out these ones here. This long guy.
and those hairs that are crossing that are not really adding. Okay, and uh, now we're getting to an area where there's a bit more concentrated action. And uh, undo is definitely your friend. If you uh, happen to adjust something and you don't want it, you can just quickly go back. Um, I would zoom in a bit more to just be more precise here. I'm still working with the same tool. Um, and I guess over the last uh, updates of Photoshop, this brush has been uh, improved pretty much. It's uh, definitely something that is a go-to tool for me. Uh, I remember days where you had to do everything with the clone stamp and uh, you were not that fast and flexible. So uh, it's pretty smart. And even if you find something that looks like this now, you just take your clone stamp tool and um, adjust it to settings that you're comfortable working with and then you can just take these things off. And since we're adding some, some grain later, uh, it allows it allows for um, for you to be what's the word? Um, sloppy wouldn't be the right word, but you don't have to be extra precise. Oops. Uh, I want to work with uh, with this tool. All right, and um, let's just go over these ones. And I guess that's all that I want to do to the hair. So, and it's as you can see pretty soon, it's it's really smart. So it understands that I don't want to take out this one, but I want to take out that one. So if you cross over this. Let's do that one more time. It just leaves this and uh, that's really powerful. Be mindful with the texture um, so that we don't take out the texture too much. If that happens, um, we can still bring back the texture with a couple of techniques. Uh, let's see if that's going to be necessary. Oh, and to show what it actually looks like with the grain on top, um, I will throw the layer with the grain uh, pretty soon so that we have that in mind when uh, retouching later with dodging and burning so we don't overwork the image. Uh, it's always good that you have got some control of, uh, if you agree, uh, for example, with your client that you want to have some, uh, some grain, uh, it definitely allows you to leave a few um, of the adjustments away. So you don't have to, as I said, over retouch. Let's see if we keep that one. Mm, maybe not. I want to take it off. But since we're working on a separate layer, I, uh, I can always bring it back. And that's definitely what you want to do. You want to um, have complete control over your image and you want to be able to bring back every detail that you took out, uh, making sure that uh, if a client or a photographer or yourself change your mind, you, you do have the option to go back wherever you want to go. I guess that, that was one of the hardest lessons I had to learn uh, to keep the, the workflow as flexible as even possible. And uh, that being said, I, uh, I always work the in the way that I have complete control over everything, 
even, even if that means that I have to put in more work per image, it definitely pays off to create solid masks and to, to work on uh, separate layers and to work in a certain layer order so that you don't, um, you don't retouch over color adjustments. You always do the pixel work below the adjustments of the... Um, Sorry, you do. Uh, you you put the uh, color adjustments on top of the pixel work, and um, you keep the grain on top, so you you don't retouch uh, grain because that can lead to unwanted pattern changes and stuff like that. So, if you keep that structure in your file, you will always benefit from that. See, there's these bright hairs that we don't need that are in that corner and you can just brush over it and um, take these off with the same tool. Of course, you can still spend a lot of time doing this, but at least uh, you can be sure that this is a very reliable tool and you don't have to watch out for uh, main uh, or major texture changes. Um, I want to take out these white dots here and this is makeup dust or uh, I think it's makeup dust. What is that? I don't know. And um, all right, so Taking these off, there's these black dots here are definitely some some leftovers from from makeup. And as I said, he doesn't have that much facial hair, which is great. So we only have to deal with these tiny ones and the black ones here. And I decided uh, in this image, I want to take out those tiny white shiny parts. and um, improve the lip line a bit, but that was not looking very good. Maybe we're gonna bring in a new texture with the stamp tool. And um, just wanna take out hair that is a bit lonely out there. And yes. So these ones here, we are in pretty close. So it's always good to zoom out every once in a while or at least think about how close you are in because it can lead to uh, unnecessary cleaning work, which sometimes um, it gives you a better overview if you zoomed in. So do as you as you wish. Just a second, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, these ones. By the way, Stefan, did you ask your question in German? I didn't see it yet. Okay, so let's deal with a couple of these spots here. We can do it with the same tool. Okay, so I just want to make sure that we are working, we're taking out the, the texture that we don't want because everything uh, light related, uh, we can then fix it with dodging and burning to give it the most natural result in the end. Um, let's, let's just quickly go back here. I'm not sure about this hair. 
Uh, I guess I'm gonna try taking it out and see what it looks like. I'm gonna use the other uh, heating brush where you sample hitting the uh, option button. And now before we go in too much. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to draw one hair here. So therefore I have created uh, an action that brings my uh, new layer layer here. And um, actually I have another hairbrush that I like to use, which has uh, settings that I found uh, the most reliable for me. So it has 100% opacity, 50% flow, 20% smoothing, and no pen pressure. That allows me to um, just sample a color here and continue hair like this, and bring it back in. So it looks uh, pretty natural and I like it the most. I uh, definitely want to take out that one too here and See if we can deal with it with this. Yes, pretty what? Pretty well. Hair is such a sensitive topic. Um, therefore, um, it's good to spend some time with it. And uh, I guess this one here is just shining out too much for my taste. And there's another black dot. And uh, here is a few things that I want to take care of. Um, all right. So there's this one dark spot over here that we can take away. And then it's about time to go to the dodge and burn phase, I think. Or maybe we can even out that texture here a little bit. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, I like using the clone stamp tool with a low setting, like 20% opacity, 100% flow. And then, you know, just sample from an area that is close and very gently take the texture from the surrounding area to uh, work on the contrast that is uh, in these very visible pores. If you do it gently, um, you're not destroying any texture or bringing in weird texture. So, um, you know, that's just one way to not only um, work with light, like with dodging and burning, but you can also uh, fill it in uh, with texture that is from the same area, which I like to do every now and then because it gives me quite natural results and um, I like using um, texture. But as I said, you want to do it with a low um, Yes, uh, let me answer two questions quickly. Pedro, yes, you're right. Um, um, maybe you were not there when I uh, mentioned this. So absolutely, um, you have two choices. You can work on the, the color version, do the, do the conversion uh, later uh, to black and white in Photoshop. Um, or uh, in this case, what I wanted to do was work on the... Um, on the uh, image in Capture One, making the most out of the RAW because I knew that it's going to be black and white and not going to be used in um, in a color version. So, but if it would be uh, used in color as well, I definitely would uh, do the conversion later. Either I would bring in the image again to Capture One after I finished it in Photoshop, or I um, would do the the conversion in Photoshop. It depends on the style. 
that you prefer or the, the workflow that you prefer, um, it definitely leaves you... Oh, I chose the wrong tool here. It definitely leaves you uh, a lot of opportunity. So whatever is best for you, um, you should use, I think. And yes, Chris, the, the hairbrush settings, uh, of course. Um, it is 100% uh, opacity. That's I always put it in uh, the name, uh, what I have as a setting. 100% opacity, 50% flow, 20% smoothing. And let me check um, in this here. I have the transfer ticked on. And uh, that's also flow goes to pen pressure. But if you check off and on transfer, you see that the edges are a bit more uh, thin. I hope that helps. So there's this tiny little white dot here. And I just want to calm those hairs down a bit. But I'm not going to take them out completely. Not because I don't want to, or if I because I don't can, but uh, it's because I think um, it's kind of a signature thing, and I don't want to take it all out. It would be something that needs to be discussed with the photographer client, or um, as I said, sometimes it's uh, it's a personal trait, so. You leave things as they are. Okay, so that's that. And now I'm going to create a dodge and burn set. It's just two curves. <laughs> Stefan, that's a good question. Um, Stefan asked if I work in silence uh, or if uh, to be to be able to focus more or if I hear music or I hear uh, um, um, uh, an audiobook and definitely I'm not working in silence all the time I love uh, listening to podcasts to uh, audio books sometimes uh, sometimes it's hard to focus um, on on uh, on a long story I think um, but definitely music, uh, conversations, uh, these are things that I enjoy very much. And uh, I love to, you know, have a conversation myself at the same time. Uh, and it's things that I uh, really enjoy. Definitely, I'm a music guy. And uh, now let's work on the dodge and burn part. So there's two things that I want to do. I want to deal with a few... Um, let's say micro imperfections and I want to do some more shaping to the image and um, but let's just start so I'm I'm dodging the dark areas a bit just to even them out a tiny bit so in this case I think I don't need to use any help layers because it's already black and white and it's pretty straightforward what needs to be done So if we check the before and after of this, you can already see that it makes a big difference and it doesn't look that tired anymore. That's a big thing with beauty shootings. Um, you never, uh, you know, models, they do have uh, long trips that they have to take. It's not that they have the best sleep when they are in big productions. And these are things that usually need to be taken care of. And especially with main models, there's not that much uh, makeup used um, to um, to even out these things. So you need to make sure to even out uh, these areas of skin that have different tonal structures. And um, always make sure that you don't go overboard um, what I love to do in the end when I finish a dodge and burn round, I always um, reduce the opacity of the two layers. I e either put them into a group or I um, 
take down the opacity individually. And that is something that uh, I figured um, a couple of moons ago that this is something that makes your images look much more natural. Um, although you did quite a lot uh, because you can, with dodging and burning, you can basically even out everything, right? Uh, it's just a matter of how much time you want to put in. Um, but with the amount of dodge and burn work that you put in, uh, you definitely have the chance to even out all the little details and make it a very natural but also very flat image. And um, it depends on where you want to go. So in a cosmetic beauty, um, you definitely want to make it as perfect as it can be. But also keep in mind um, that there's a, and thank God, there's a, there's a heavy trend right now in the industry that uh, they, the brands want to transport more uh, naturalness. And, but still they uh, want to have that clean face uh, a clean skin where you have the texture, where you have um, smooth transitions from uh, certain skin areas to the other. And um, it definitely helps that you do all the work in dodging and burning. But then again, uh, in the end, and I will show it to you, um, then uh, you will see uh, that it, you can bring it down to almost 50% and you still have a very good result and that is because you evened out every little detail. But it would be enough to have 50% of that. Um, whereas if you would, uh, from, from the beginning, uh, do only 50% of the work, you wouldn't have the same result. And uh, that is something which is a very funny effect, but it's... Of if you think about it, it's quite logical. You evened it out, and but still, it is. Um, if you take down the opacity, it's still evened out, but not uh, as visible. I, do you get what I mean? Uh, it's. I hope I I got my thought uh, straight, um, but that is something that I wanted to point out because it leads to a very natural results. I want to darken that area a bit here. So here's that kind of area that way that we want to have a smooth transition. We can work both ways. So we can darken a bit above, uh, below this cheekbone and we can lighten a bit on top. So if we check the before and after you see that we have evened out that pretty much and um, let's go in here. Ah. There's a little bug, I think. So if I zoom in, it jumps. So we found <laughs> we found a little bug in, in Photoshop. Uh, maybe that's a Ventura thing. I don't know. I, it didn't happen in the version before. And it's pretty slow right now. Hmm. It's very slow. It I hope that I can continue Z what is happening here. Let's switch back and forth. Sometimes that helps. I'm going to go and save the file just very quickly. Uh, maybe I can use the time to answer Stefan's question. He asks if I um, primarily work with curves for dodging and burning or if there's other methods. Um, I use a variety of methods, but usually it's curves because you have the most control. You do have um, the... Oh my, this zooming thing is uh, a bit annoying. Um, you have the mask and you have the curve and you have the opacity. So you have three measures of control when using the curves, so you can be very precise. And um, you can also work with the empty layer, for example, or a gray layer, 50% gray layer, and set it to soft light. 
Uh, that's something that I like to do as well. But um, I would definitely go with a layer that is empty. And I would not use black and white colors to dodge and burn. I would um, sample colors from the skin. And uh, a light one and a dark one. And use those to um, do the dodging and burning. Which then allows me to um, have a very natural uh, color shift so when you're working with the colors that are coming from the skin not black and white uh, it can lead to um, a fast and easy dodge and burn result but with natural colors and uh, I would encourage you to try that if you haven't okay so I guess Let's see. We are pretty good with uh, the skin because it's still a beauty but male portrait and um, I want to leave it a little characteristic, not too heavily retouched because we will bring in more contrast and that um, you, the good thing about working with uh, a certain layer order is that you can always add more adjustments on the go. If you, in the end, think, hey, there's an area that needs more dodging and burning, you don't have to get it finished right now. So you can always go back, you can always change settings and um, adjust, throw in another dodge and burn set uh, wherever you want and uh, then you're good to get it where you want it to be. Um, we could quickly dodge a few of those dark spots out or darken uh, areas that uh, you think are too bright. Actually, uh, it's it can be a good idea to start with just burning. And then this way you don't lighten the image too much. And it gives you um, maybe even more natural results if you don't touch too much. But it's, again, person preference. And uh, But I want to encourage you to try. It's, uh, it can be leading to surprisingly uh, good results if you concentrate more on burning rather than dodging. Okay, I guess that's about what I want to do. Maybe there are some spots later on that we can fix. Okay. So now, let's put in uh, another uh, dodge and burn set. In this, I named them light and strong, but the difference is just the curve. See? What I want to do now is I increase the opacity a bit, so I want to shape the face a little more. Um, and basically I want to enhance the things that are already there. So I want to enhance the, the shadow below his, here, below his neck. Um, I want to give it a little more dimension. And same goes with the, with the light. So I want to make it a little more three-dimensional. I want to lighten the area below his eyebrows a bit, but the eyebrows can be a little darker. And also with the hair, I want to emphasize the strand a bit and I want to lighten that part of the hair a bit more so that we have a more even strand. Yes, like this. And I want to 
shape it a little bit with darkening here. So that's what I want to do. Maybe darken that part of it here. I'm sorry, guys. I have to mute myself for a second. All right. And I'm going to even these parts out a little bit so that we have a more even uh, more even structure. Let's see what we did. So now it can be a good choice to uh, take these curves and um, bring them down to zero and then just bring in bring them in to an amount that you think is right. And for me, in this case, 40% is right. Oh my, and my nose, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, 40% uh, is right, I guess, yes, I like that. And let's check with the other dodge and burn um, set that we have. So if we take the opacity down, to zero and bring it in ever so slightly, you will see that even 75% is still more than enough. We can even take it down to 65 maybe. Yeah. So the overall Dutch and burn process is, is like this. And I want to group it and call it DB. This is the retouch part and um, now I want to show you um, a way to bring in uh, more contrast in a very um, natural way and uh, I also want to um, bring in a little vignette to finish this off and then we are going to put the grain so the thing that I want to do now is the contrast. I have an action for that, but uh, I want to show you um, how to do it. So the first thing that you want to do is create a stamp. And um, so you can create the stamp with an action or you can uh, just hit command option shift E. And then you have your stamp as well. And what I like to do with this is um, I know what I'm going to do. So I name the layer uh, as, I, as I do. It's called uh, Shadow Highlights 1050 and 50% 50, uh, per, uh, 50 high pass. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to convert it to a smart object because then I have the option to um, bring the uh, settings back if I don't like them. So image adjustments, shadow highlights. As I said, 10 for the shadows. So we'll lighten the shadows a bit. 50 for the highlights to bring the highlights down. Okay, 10, 50. And the next thing that I want to do is use a, um, sorry, not a view, but a filter, a high pass. That is, that you find that with filter, other, high pass. And I want to use a setting of 50. And uh, now I'm going to put that to soft light mode. And what it does, it brings a nice contrast to the image. You see that there are some halos popping up here, so um, we don't definitely don't want to use it with 100%, but uh, it can be nice anywhere around 30 to, to 50%. And if these halos come up, of course you can mask it, right? Uh, yes, Stefan, um, I, I found out that it's most, most likely <laughs> the the same uh, values but it depends on the image size so um, what you want to look for if we go back to 
normal and to 100% is that you see um, the, the areas that you want to enhance, right? So if you see um, the whole face, if you see the structure, you are in the ballpark and that is where you want to go. So I think I'm going to leave it with 35 in this case. It just brings in that amount of sharpness and the amount of um, clarity that I want. And um, to do that one more time, for example, you can, this is the global approach now. If you do that one more time, I have an action here for that. So as I said, but of course you can do it manually too. Um, I want to do it again and mask it out by holding option and clicking the mask icon and then bring it in uh, partially with a brush of 30% for example on the eyes and on the eyebrows maybe on the lips it depends on what you want to highlight and definitely the hair can benefit from that the contrast of the hair hair uh, in general um, can be benefiting a lot from a uh, nice contrast. Okay, so um, that is that. And now I want to show you how I usually create a vignette. And therefore I'm going to go for the elliptical selection tool. Hit Q for a quick mask. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and crank it way up uh, to an amount that I think is suitable for the image, so maybe something like this. Hit Q, invert the selection, and uh, set a curve that now has the mask at the outer edge, and then you can bring down the light a bit, and frame the face even more. And um, now it's time to throw in uh, my grain pattern. As I said uh, earlier, maybe uh, if you're joining right now, if you joined just a few seconds ago, you can um, find a video on my YouTube channel where I show you how to create these grain patterns. I'm going to just select this one and uh, increase the scale a bit because I want to show you what we're doing. Um, so these are definitely, these are grain patterns that I created from um, the grain from Capture One. And you can also do that from scanned film. I did that too. Um, so you can check out the video and see how it's, how it's done, how you create these patterns that you can then apply to your image. And the benefit it gives you is whatever changes you make to um, the, the grain pattern or to the surface or to the canvas, uh, this adjustment layer will grow with it. So you never have to edit any borders and it can be very beneficial. So this is the grain. This is somewhat the, the look. Look, contrast. This is the vignette. The grain and what we are going to do now to make this grain visible is um, we're going to set it to overlay and if we go to 100% you can see that it merges very nicely into the image and it gives it that film look that I was looking for and you can always decrease or increase the opacity um, you can go to soft light, which is a more natural um, contrast mode. You can also go to, to hard light to bring it, or to vivid light, and or you can try all these, bring you different results. Um, and I want to keep it at overlay, but I want to show you something else that is really nice. Um, if you then double click that um, pattern, you can scale this up to whatever you like, 250%, 500%, and you can see that that grain grows, right? 
and that gives you a lot of flexibility and other use cases like if you want to mimic skin texture you can use that in a higher setting um, and brush it in with the mask and uh, have have control over the amount or the size of the grain that you want to bring in and that definitely gives you uh, a lot of control over over your image so this is what uh, we came up with starting here in uh, in photoshop and i guess we pretty much worked on everything that we pointed out beforehand in the notes and uh, that is what I would do uh, to create a, um, a nice and solid uh, male beauty portrait. That's, um, wow, this zoom effect is somewhat weird. Anyway, um, maybe if it's not moving, I can maybe go back to, to capture one and... Um, make a clone out of that reset everything and bring that to photoshop as well wait a second not like this but like this because then i can show you the the real before and after Thank you, Flori. That means a lot to me. Um, really glad that I can help you and give you an insight. And uh, if there's if there's only one thing that I, you know, would love for you to take away um, is that I love giving and I love sharing. And the only thing I ask from you is um, please give to give to others and help them help them grow in their craft. And it can be. In a creative field, it can be in any other uh, field of life. It's always good, you know, if you, if you give something, you will get something back. And uh, the pleasure of giving uh, can't be pointed out enough. I really enjoy that, and I'm happy if you help someone else. Um, let's put those next to each other. check out what we came up with. All right, so that's that. And um, we can go over a couple of your questions if you like. Um, I want to remind you again that uh, the, my new English podcast is out. I'm inviting you to, to listen to the first episode that I recorded with Pratik Nike. And uh, there's more episodes coming every Friday. And um, it's about, you know, connecting the creative industry, the people from the creative industry, anyone. Talents, you know, it doesn't matter if you're young or old. Um, I want to bring value and people together that are happy to share insights and stuff. Everything from their career to, um, to um, amazing input to sources of inspiration and everything. So... Happy to um, have feedback from you if you give it a listen. And um, I hope that you enjoyed that um, tutorial today. And um, let's see if you have any more questions. Um, yes, the, Stefan, the video will be put online. Um, the f for the coming day, I think the recording of this stream will be online, but I might edit the the video a bit like taking the like the start off uh, the time that uh, was before um, the, the, the actual stream started so but yes it's gonna be there and um, if you got any more questions feel free to ask other than uh, otherwise um, I'm going to see you in the next stream or I hear you um, when uh, you give me some feedback on... Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, 
if you know someone that could be interested in um, that kind of uh, educational tutorials, please just forward them uh, this video. I'd be happy if you comment uh, below the video because that helps others to find it. And of course, um, if you haven't yet, you're invited to um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and of course to the podcast if you're interested in hearing what other creatives from the industry say. And um, thank you. Um, I'm getting better, I'm sure, but it was my pleasure to spend time with you tonight and to give you an insight. And uh, stay tuned. Wishing you nothing but the best. Take care. Have a great evening and see you soon. Bye-bye.